I had to request Susie to hit record since she's the host. I did. Okay, I did. perfect. Thank you. All right. I want to welcome everyone to today's professional development on the child outcome measurement. I want to introduce to everyone Suzanne Perry, who is our 619 consultant from the great state of Arizona, and also Jackie Hersom, who is our assistant 619 coordinator for Child Development Services. They are going to, going to be presenting today. If you did not already hear, we would like you to enter your email in the chat so that we can forward further information to you. So at this time, I will turn it over to Susie and Jackie. All right, I think Jackie's gonna get us started today. Uh, but I thank will. you, Andy, for welcoming us and welcome everybody that's here. Yes, thank you, Sandy, and thank you, Susie. Hi, everyone. Um, so glad you could join us today for this. This is the uh, Measuring Children's Outcomes in Early Childhood Special Education. Please forgive my voice. I am starting to lose it due to a cold. So at times I hear myself and I think, who is that? Um, I, so my apologies if my voice goes in and out during this. Um, and so we would like to start with basically the goal for all early childhood educational settings, which is to enable young children um, with disabilities to achieve, to be active and successful participants during their early childhood years and into the future. And one way of ensuring that is through the use of the child outcomes, outcome summaries. And Susie, if you wanna hit for the next slide. So today's topics in this will be, <coughs> excuse me, the child outcome summary process, which starts with sharing the purpose. Then we talk about the what, which is the breadth of the outcomes. We focus on functionality, age anchoring, which is a key piece engaging families and teaming, and determining and using COAST ratings. So much of this presentation will be the who, the what, the why, the where, the how. Slide. So we're gonna start with why. So the purpose. The child outcome, sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> This data collection is a federally required data submission that each state submits to the U.S. Department of Education. Today's session will be an overview of this process that will help you to understand the why, the what, and the how, which we talked about. The Child Outcome Summary process helps us measure children's progress in our programs. The statewide data is compared to other states, while the SAU and district data is used to evaluate the programs and the progress of the children and teachers can use the data to evaluate individual children's progress. There are several reasons for collecting info about children's progress. And the information helps determine whether, oops. Oops, I'm sorry. That's okay. Whether children in our programs are progressing based on, their, are on our instructional efforts. Federally reported data is used to determine if federal funded for provision of early childhood special education is making a difference. State and local programs use results to know how well programs are serving children and families and how to help programs improve. And teachers use the results to inform instruction in, in the classroom. So it's, it um, informs services and systems. What are the major elements of the COAST process? So this is the breadth of the outcome and it focuses on the functional skills. There are three major childhood outcomes. Um, we get, this is the what of the presentation. When a preschool age child is evaluated for special education and is determined eligible and in need of services, this information and the subsequent IEP establish the incoming performance of that child. The performance is compared to what we would expect for a child their age. And the COAST process is designed to ensure that we are measuring child growth and development in a consistent manner across the states, while allowing for a variety of approaches to do so. The child is assessed using the COAST process across these three major elements, which is positive social emotional skills, acquisition and use of knowledge and skills, and use of appropriate behaviors to meet the needs. These cover broadly much, much of the domains and in each one is Sorry, my voice is going 
six um, bundles of skills for each one. You can see under positive social emotional skills, there's relating with caregivers and expressing own emotions, responding to emotions of others. Under our second, acquisition and use of knowledge and skills, some of the functional skills are using problem solving, acquiring language to communicate. And under the third, which is the use of appropriate behaviors to meet needs, we have eating and drinking with increasing independence, diapering and toileting, and showing safety awareness. Within each, sorry, we can consistently measure children's functional skills and behaviors across settings using these three broad categories and these six functional skills built within. Did I zoom in for you on that? Nope, Jackie? I don't think so. Nope. Okay. Doesn't seem to want to zoom. Oh, did you want me to? Um. I guess I guess we can ask the group if they'd like to see it any closer or if they want to wait for the we have a handout as well for everyone that will show this <laughs> a little bit more. There we go. So There's a little bit in. closer. Yeah. So you can get an idea of the six bundles of skills for outcome one. And what I like is under each um, skill bundle, there's also an example of that goes even more descriptive of what that will look like. So when you're doing your rating for each child, you can get a good idea of what those all mean. Next slide. Yes. And this is where I hand it to you, Susie. All righty. Thank you. So now we're going to look at another aspect of the, um, so that was kind of the skills that we're measuring. And then these are the ratings that would be applied, um, uh, the score, if you will, for the um, each of the areas. So a rating is identified for each of the outcome areas for each child as they enter the program and as they exit the program. For some children, these events may be 24 months apart. Um, on average, children are in the program about 18 months between uh, as they enter at three years old and leave at five years old. This process is, however, used as well, similarly in the early intervention side of things. So um, each uh, while they're in early intervention, zero to three, they will have an entry and an exit score. In preschool, they will also have an entry and an exit score. Uh, the ratings group group children's performance into three major categories. So we can see this first category is overall age expected functioning, and that includes scores of six or seven. Um, some age expected functioning would be a rating of four or five, and then not yet age expected functioning are any of these ratings of a one, two, or three. And there's a description or a definition of what is meant by a six, a seven, a four, or five, or one, two, or a three. An exit rating is collected when the child is no longer eligible for preschool special education, whether by age or is no longer in need of services, or if the child moves, or if, and the child is rated again based on the age expectation for his or her current age. Um, states may collect data about children at the end of the year. However, uh, Maine at this time will just be collecting an entry and an exit score. So at the beginning upon um, um, identification and then exit as the child leaves special education or moves on to kindergarten. Um, this helps ensure that there is a final score, you know, so doing that at the end of the year, the reason for doing that would be um, in case the child moves. But in this case, we are only co collecting two scores from, from you in, in the state of Maine. Um, the ratings are on this one to seven scale, and they reference the degree to which a child is demonstrating age expected development. So in order to provide or to select a score from that one to seven skills, the uh, team that's looking at the child 
would be basing that on the behaviors that are expected for the particular age of the child. Um, age expectations are utilized in various assessment tools and teams making post ratings must be familiar with and have a common understanding of expected development at various ages and stages. So what you're looking at right here is just one page of an age anchoring tool. And we will be sending the PowerPoint to you that has links to the age anchoring tool that um, is uh, being offered here in this presentation, although there are other, other ones out there. Um, let's see, so one example of a tool that represents the skills and behaviors by age and outcome area is this one from the University of North Carolina's Frank Porter Graham Child Development Institute and the North Carolina Office of Early Learning. Other tools such as the Brigance Developmental Inventory, the Battelle Developmental Inventory, the Teaching Strategies Gold are other um, child development tools um, assessment tools that are crosswalked to these three outcome areas that we will need to report on. So let's take a little bit um, deeper look at how the COAST process is conducted. Uh, the child outcome summary is a team-based process that collects information about the child's functioning through a discussion of the six bundled questions for each outcome area. And what you're looking at right now is a tool that is offered by the Early Childhood Technical Assistance Center that could be used by a team to collect information, in this case, about the skill bundle on social emotional skills. The team's central question is, does the child ever function in ways that would be considered age expected with regard to this outcome? So you have to know what's expected for that child's age and you have to learn from the teachers and the parents what the child is doing across the home and classroom settings. In order for parents to engage in the process, it's a best practice to share with them the outcome areas and the bundled questions beforehand so that they can share examples of what the child does when they're with them. As I mentioned, there are various ways to obtain the ratings that describe the relative performance of the child based on what is expected for a child their age. There are published tools, such as those included on this list by the Early Childhood Technical Assistance Center. The protocols and training for these tools are funded by the department. The Battelle Developmental Inventory, the Developmental Assessment of Young Children, and Teaching Strategies Gold. These tools were crosswalked by ECTA, meaning that each test item was aligned to one of the three outcome areas. So um, we're going to take a look at that. Um, um, while we're looking at this, what tools on the list are you familiar with or have you used before? Feel free to unmute or put those thoughts in the chat and share with us um, your familiarity with any of the tools that are presented here today. Anybody used Teaching Strategies Gold or anybody used the Battelle Developmental Inventory to in the evaluation process for children? TS Gold is familiar, we're seeing in the chat. Thank you. All right. Um, being trained in the Battelle and the Daisy in the near future, awesome. That'll be great. So here's an example of how um, the items, for example, in Teaching Strategies Gold are um, aligned into the three different outcome areas. So Teaching Strategies Gold has objectives and dimensions. They're categorized into these three outcome areas. So you can see there's about nine or 10 questions in social emotional skills. 
um, like 23 or so questions in outcome two, and then um, about five questions that are in outcome three, um, behaviors to meet needs. So um, each different assessment tool comes with it, its own proprietary um, um, alignments, and those are obtained through the website that I was just showing you. So if you don't have one of those tools, it is possible to conduct the child outcome summary process um, using a more organic uh, method. So like I was showing you before, using the COAST um, uh, ratings definitions that are um, being shown right here onto the left side, hand side of the screen alongside of the age anchoring tool. And so what we're looking at right now is a child that is um, behaviors in outcome one, two, and three for a child who is between 49 and 60 months. And so it lists here some of the different behaviors that we would expect to see for a child that age. So as the team is getting together and talking about the child, they might be using that bubble sheet that um, I showed you on a previous slide to record some of the conversations from the parents and from the, um, the general ed and special ed teacher that are involved. And um, so the COAST rating scale is this descriptive rating scale that's used in tandem with the age anchoring tool to reference the degree to which the child's skills and behaviors at their current age are developmentally expected, whether or not they're somewhat behind or very behind. Um, so let's see. I went through and I have put together sort of a, um, a pretend student, hy hypothetical student. And so for outcome one, the social emotional skills, I proposed that this child is able to, I put him in green, so he's um, operating or functioning at the overall age expected um, level for um, recognizing rules and compliant with them most of the time. Uh, we said that, um, in the somewhat age expected functioning, this child is able to ask for adult help. So um, they're using a mix of skills with more skills that are age expected than not age expected um, across settings. And then perhaps um, in this one, um, preferring to play with other children to playing alone. And so let's just say this child is um, performing out of four or a five uh, on those set of skills. And then when we looked at um, these um, additional set of skills, carrying on long conversations with friends related to a wide range of topics, um, this child was really at the not yet age expected functioning for that, um, for his um, performance. So if this was what um, the team saw as that child's performance, Overall, on a one to seven scale, what score do you think we might give this child or this student? If you were a team member, what would you suggest? All right, I have a four proposed, awesome. Any other ideas, thoughts? So a four says that the child occasionally uses age expected skills across settings and situations in this outcome area. More functioning is not age expected than is age expected. So that does make sense, doesn't it? So we said on this one, let's see what the reading was and it was a four, so good job on that one, awesome. Um, let's look at a couple of things on outcome two. On this one for this, so this is about acquiring and using knowledge and skills. So this is um, lit, uh, liter early literacy, early math skills, um, um, some communication skills. And so we said on this one that um, they're operating as an age expected functioning on things like verbalizing opposite analogies, sorting by shape and color, um, dictating individual storybooks, familiar stories from books and experiences, and clapping syllables in a name. And then we also said that this child was um, 
at the somewhat age expected functioning for acting out stories from a book, like Three Little Pigs, attending while being read to for four to 10 minutes, and showing interest in related activities. And um, so on that one, if that's what the, uh, the team, the COAST process team said for this child, what score do you think might be appropriate for, um, for this outcome area? Go ahead and put your number in the chat or unmute. And if anybody has any ideas or thoughts or questions, All right, so I see a, pr a proposed six on this one. Great, any other ideas? All righty, and so on this one, we proposed a five, but this brings up the um, idea that um, the team would have a discussion about that and settle on an ultimate score and would include information about why this was the score that was selected. So it might not be a five. It might be the team thought that this really looked more like a four. So thinking about the difference between the definition of uh, between a five and a four would be something that the team would look at. And so for the last one on taking appropriate actions to meet needs, we said that this child was in the green on all of these skills, that um, brushing teeth, bathing without assistance, demonstrating hand dominance, beginning to gallop, demonstrating mealtime skills, um, setting the table, using knife cutting uh, of soft foods, making activity choices without the teacher's help, zipping zippers, these were all in the green area. And so, um, what score do you think that um, this team put for this one? It could be that the child functions in ways that are age expected in all or almost all of everyday situations that are part of the child's life. No one on the team has concerns about the child's functioning in this outcome area. And, or it could be that the child's functioning is generally considered age expected but there are some significant concerns about the child's functioning in this outcome area. Although age expected, the child's functioning may border on not keeping pace with age expectations. So I see some sixes here on this one, I believe. And so we thought a six on this one. So again, the team could have a discussion about what, um, you know, what were, what was some of the evidence or <clears throat> some examples, maybe the parent offered some examples. And as you go through the um, list of age expected development in these three outcome areas, it might be um, um, a decision that the team would have to come to um, agreement on. So I see we have a question. What about the rest of the categories? Is it okay to not consider the whole list? So in this training right now for this example, there are lots of, of um, things that we could have considered. The team would go through and talk about of the, remember on the, um, I'm gonna go back to it real quick. So close your eyes. I'm gonna go back. Remember we talked about all of these skills. The team would want to talk about each of these bundles. So um, in relating with caregivers, does the child um, function in any way um, like a child his or her age in relating with caregivers? And then the team would have a discussion about that. The tool for the age anchoring tool is a tool to help remind us of what is expected for um, a child that's 49 to 60 uh, year, months of age, but um, you can scan through these, you can color code all of them, but primarily you're re, uh, we are asking you to be responsible for looking at those six bundled areas so that we're all measuring the same thing. So let me get back to where we were here. And so it's up to the team 
we are asking that you um, ensure that the score that you rate this child from is um, valid for that, for the purposes of the, uh, you know, of, of what you understand and know about this child. So that's why it's important that you have a team there of people who have seen him across settings and environments that um, understand that child's functioning and um, are accurately demonstrating what that child's functioning is upon entry. So that's why it's really important to do this um, prior, you know, right after the child is evaluated, pr prior to um, um, being um, in services and being special, getting special ed services. So let's see here. One, um, when not using a published tool such as the Battelle or Teaching Strategies Gold or the Brigance, we are asking for the teams to document information um, that demonstrated an evidence of why that rating was selected. So when um, teams get together and review children's progress, um, if the published tool is not being used, record the results of the discussion and the evidence for the ratings selected. And we have um, a tool that we can on there that we're going to put on send to you that you'd be able to use to um, record that information. So this is just one page. So this is uh, on the positive social emotional skills. You would put in here the uh, check the score and write in these um, text boxes, supporting evidence for the outcome rating. In, in what ways is the child demonstrating age appropriate functioning, um, into immediate foundational skills or functioning that's not yet age appropriate for that child. And then as you um, are exiting the child, you would be um, again rating the child and then describing any progress that the child has demonstrated. So this is um, a tool that's from the Early Childhood Technical Assistance Center and is a nice way to record. And the reason we're asking for um, teams to include evidence or to maintain evidence of this is that should we start seeing some unusual patterns of scoring um, or patterns that don't make sense? So in general, um, it's expected that a child makes growth of one point between entry and exit. So if they entered as a three, they probably wouldn't um, exit as much more than a four because we're not only we are, because we're expecting more um, skill development. So we're increasing what the child should know during that 17 or 18 months that they're in the program. And so um, it's, pretty common for us to, for across the country to only see about one point growth or two points growth. So if we start seeing like they are going from a one to a seven, we probably want to take a look at why um, children were um, rated this way. And uh, so let's see. So that brings us to the idea of this does seem like a lot of work and it might not be work that you've been um, had to ex, you know engage in before or um, maybe you weren't familiar with this activity and we want to try to make sure that it's able to be integrated into things that you're already doing nobody wants this to be a standalone activity there are ways to integrate the COAST process into existing IEP process activities. And the ECTA recently came out with this um, uh, flowchart that talks about no matter what stage of the process that we are in, whether it's um, child find referral, we're able to, or the evaluation and eligibility stage or the IEP development stage or the service delivery stage, there's information that we can glean about the child that will, um, that will be able to be included in that COAS uh, process documentation. So um, the ET ECTA has this flow chart um, and um, whether children are transitioning from earlier intervention or referred through the child find process, the first way to integrate COAS activities 
is by communicating information about the COAST process to parents. So we want to help prepare them for engaging in this discussion with the team and to be able to provide information about what it looks like that how that child is doing, you know, what that those things that the child is doing at home. They might not be able to tell you whether or not that was developmentally appropriate, but they can certainly share with you information in each of the outcome areas that would help you to understand the degree to which um, it is developmentally or age expected functioning. And so we collect that information, record that information, and use that as we're, um, whether we're in the child find referral stage or, and certainly in the evaluation and eligibility stage is where the majority of this information is pulled from as you're doing the Battelle or as you're doing the, um, the, the DACI that um, you were going to be getting trained on. So that in those tools can help you to establish that, that age expected developmental skills that the child is demonstrating. Um, let's see. During the IEP stage, um, the team is going to finalize the COAST ratings uh, during a discussion of those present levels and complete the COAST. Once service delivery begins, you're going to be monitoring and sharing that progress on the goals and the, and the three outcome areas. And as the child exits from the program, the team will again complete that COAST assessment using your assessment tools and other information gathered from across settings and routines. So is that making sense in terms of an overall process that we're gathering this information at the beginning of um, um, identification and eligibility? We're recording that child's performance um, on a one to seven scale. We we're going to be talking in a minute about how that data is um, collected and maintained and submitted. Um, and then again, at the as the, just before the child leaves, um, that the team would be doing that once again to get that COAST rating score. Are there any questions on so far on just a general understanding about the process? Susie, there's some questions in the chat. Okay. Sure. Um, when the child leaves as in before they go to kindergarten. Correct. So um, we haven't set yet the exact date by which this data needs to be submitted, but we are asking teams to be able to um, obtain the exit score prior to the end of the school year or prior to, if you know the child is leaving, then collect the exit data. If you don't know the child is leaving, as soon as possible afterwards, um, that you would have a meeting to record that. And um, there are some additional caveats to that is that the child would need to have been in the program for at least six months. So let's move on to the next slide, which I think um, Jackie is going to talk to us a little bit more about that COAST entry and exit data and the submission of that information. Yes, I was just thinking Darcy is good because she knew what was coming next. Yeah. Um, so we talked a little bit about the how and the where, and now we're gonna talk about the when. So the entry data, as Susie was just saying, needs to be completed. Um, it can be completed during the review of existing data, the multidisciplinary evaluation team meeting, or at the initial IEP meeting. It's just important that it is collected at the onset of services um, to document the child's performance prior to services. And then the exit data, so there's a two, point, um, two points in time that this needs to be done. The exit data is completed when the child is discharged. And we, typically we say immediately before any kind of discharge, but as Susie was saying, there are um, some caveats um, data will be submitted for all exiting children who have received services for the last six months. And of course, there are those um, extenuating services, uh, circumstances where you may not know the child is leaving and just get it as soon as you can um, after they have left. Mm -hmm. So the reason that we're asking them to, asking you to get this right away is because if you, once you start delivering specially designed instruction, you, 
we, we are going to start seeing children's growth, right? So what we want to do is collect it prior to you delivering SDI so that we see the most amount of growth possible, right? So before we're instructing the child and just um, prior to them leaving, that gives you the most amount of time to um, really represent the impact that you have um, affect, you know, the ways that you've affected the child and that child's program. And that's what we wanna represent is the, um, you know, the valuable work that, that you all are doing, the um, instruction that you're providing that's really helping that child to develop and grow. Um, if a child has been in the program for less than six months, we are not collecting, you're not gonna be submitting any exit data for that child because it's not enough federally, they say that's not enough time for us to actually um, see any growth. Let's see here. We have some frequently asked questions that we want to go over because we feel that they may help you all. Question one is, are we required to do the COAST process for all children in the classroom, both with and without disabilities? And the answer to that is no. The COAST process reflects that two points in time um, for preschool children with disabilities. While any kind of ongoing progress monitoring activities are good for all children, this really focuses um, on determining the progress uh, and, um, sorry, my brain, and how well our programs and services are doing for the child mm -hmm. in relation to IEP goals. Is there a mandated tool or process for conducting the COAST process? There is not a mandated tool. Um, you actually are open to choosing from a variety of tools uh, and ECTA or ECTA actually lists many um, tools that are beneficial to use for this and many that are commonly being used nationwide um, that you can take a look at and see what works best for you. Um, so there's no mandated tool. We just need to make sure that we're using it um, to inform our rating process and that uh, results are valid and reliable. How can we prepare to utilize the COAST process accurately? There are, I mean, if you go onto the ECTA website, there is so much information um, and there are online training modules. I think Jen Hopkins had sent out um, with this invite for this meeting, um, information about the modules actually for the process. Um, they're a little lengthy, but are so incredibly informative and um, really break this down as detailed as possible. So there's the modules and there's also, we have included some handouts from ECTA that you'll be getting following this meeting. And there are several others on the site. Um, there's pro professional development things that you can use if you wanna help train others at your location. Um, there's frequently used resources and there's the knowledge check, which is very important as well. I'm gonna demystify us that the Coast process online module and show what that looks like. So if you click on that link, so we are going to send you the PowerPoint. If you click on that link, it, it takes you to this page and then you are going to get started and it will show you the, um, I think there's like eight sessions. They take 30 to 45 minutes each and they are really interesting. They are interactive. So it has little quizzes in there. So it's it's really kind of fun. And um, there's session one, session two. So it, it'll have an overview. It'll have a little assessment. So it'll give you a little quiz. And um, so really it's, um, they're very interesting. There's lots of videos. They're, they're not difficult. Um, it's pretty easy to navigate through them. So um, they're, they're, they're friendly, friendly modules. <laughs> Yes, and one of the things I love about those modules is there's a huge focus on how you can relate this information to families and make it easy for them to understand the process and the importance of the process. Um, so in, in, I think before almost every module, they kind of talk to how, um, how would you explain this to families? And then they go into how they would help you and guide you to explain this to families, which is really great. Yeah, yeah there, there's a big emphasis on engaging families. And it really, when I, when you think about it, it's really just going to benefit you if parents also know 
that these are the things we're trying to develop. These are the skills and these are the ways that we're going to be measuring those skills. It, it really helps parents to uh, be on the same page. Um, I believe that is the end of the information that we were um, going to share with you today. Um, but we do have a few minutes in case anybody had any additional questions or if there were concerns or something that we missed that you, um, you'd like to know a little bit more about. Yes, so please feel free to contact me. My email is there for anyone that needs it with, with any questions or concerns you may have regarding this. I'm happy to help. So we can stop the recording and that way, in case anybody does have questions, they'll feel brave to share them. So some of the, um, so for example, the TS Gold platform generates a report that gives you the scores. We were looking into whether or not the Battelle also had that feature. And um, so we're kind of investigating that, whether or not it, you know, as you went through and um, completed the assessment, whether or not it I would, a few places near you. Oops, sorry, <laughs> would also demonstrate that, uh, I mean, generate that report. So um, let's see. Oh, I have to turn off the recording on the host. I don't know how to do that. Susie, just on the bottom, you can oh, just there hit, there you go. There we go. 